student my name is bhagyadeep kral from algen institute of engineering and technology welcome to the my online lecture series of basics of automotive system so this is the chapter 4 and final topic of the uh, this chapter rear axles in that topic various types of rear axles we discussed uh, in this today's lectures okay so we have uh, covered it on previous video lectures that the two types of uh, drive system or rear axles like a hotchkiss types okay let me start the new topic that is the three types of our rear axles okay rear axles is nothing but it is a connection between the differential and uh, differential and our rear wheel okay that means it is your differential so let we understand this is our differential and this differential is connected to the power comes from the propeller shaft and this differential is connected to the side <coughs> gear these are the side gear inside in the differential mechanism and this side gear is connected with this rear axles okay and both side of rear axle is provided okay these are the rear axle on the rear axle the wheel are mounted or we can say wheel hub are mounted so let we discuss this different types of rear axles this different type of rear axles okay so uh, generally this rear axles uh, is a live a uh, soft axles or we can say live soft axles on this rear axles different types of loads uh, which can bear by this axles okay so let you understand which type of loads comes on that axles so first of the shearing force due to weight of the vehicle uh, the first one is the shearing force okay the shearing force due to the weight of the vehicle the load which comes on the rear axle that is a shear force okay we already understand the how to count the shear force okay because we assume that the axles is like a uh, simply supported beam these are the reaction on that uh, beam and two forces that is due to on spring to this axles comes on that axle rear axles that's why uh, this shear force are induced and that can be bared by that uh, rear axle shaft next is bending moment on account of the load applied through the spring seat okay next bending moment is introduced and it is comes on that rear axle shaft applied through spring seats okay and thrust and bending moment by and thrust and its reaction offered by tire on the ground and driving torque that means this all the types of load which comes on that rear axles shaft okay so we design a rear axle and different different methods okay so basically types of rear axles is three types semi floating axles full floating axle and three quarter floating axles three types of rear axles shaft we used first one is a semi floating full floating and three quarter floating so let me understand one by one what is the semi floating full floating and three quarter floating uh, rear axle shaft okay so uh, semi floating is a very easy and uh, very uh, used in conventional methods or it is used in a car and light duty vehicles and full floating is a very robust type and heavy strength it have a very heavily strength and it is used in a truck and heavy vehicles okay and three quarters floating is in between of this two okay semi uh, semi floating axles and full floating axles so let me discuss the one by one uh, what is the different in construction of that that semi floating full floating and three quarter floating type okay the first one is a semi floating axles in semi floating axles these are the our axle shaft okay this is our axle shaft on which the axle casings are provided that means the in, inside the axle uh, inside this axle casing the axle shaft is provided these are the our axle casing this is a cross section view this diagram is nothing but the cross sectional view of the semi floating axle or and this axing uh, this uh, axle casing and axle shaft between one bearing is provided roller bearing is provided or we can say ball bearing okay this ball is showing in the figure okay these are nothing but it is a bearing which provided between so it can freely rotates okay these are the axle shaft and these are the axle casing the one end of this axle shaft is connected to the differential by side thrust gear okay this is connected to the uh, differential mechanism and other end or other uh, extension of other end which is connected to the this wheel hub okay this is nothing but this wheel hub and it is connected to the other end of extension of other end of this axle shaft and it is uh, done by this uh, and it is connected by the bolt mechanism we provided bolt and taper key is also provided to connect the shaft and that wheel hub okay so this is the construction of semi floating 
axles and this type of semi floating axle is used to uh, all types of load which comes on the axles which are directly uh, comes on that axles like a <coughs> torque reactions side thrust or we can say uh, shearing force bending moment every types of load which directly uh, taken on that axle shaft these are the semi floating axle and this this semi floating axles is used in a light duty vehicles or we can say car another is a full floating axles in full floating axle what happened it is different from that semi floating axle that means the axle is fully floated that means it is the one end is connected to that differential mechanism they are the similar but in that the casing is provided over here which is connected with the two tapered bearing here we use the two tapered bearing that means whenever loads comes on that wheel that it can be miss uh, it can be aligned self aligned that's why we use the uh, tapered bearing here and two tapered bearing are used and bearing lock nuts is provided to lock that bearing okay and this axle shaft is connected to the this wheel hub and uh, wheel hub okay one end of this uh, wheel hub and uh, over which uh, wheel hub uh, wheel studs are provided and flange sleeve is provided so these are the axles casing these are nothing but these are the axles casing this is nothing but these axles casing and inside which axle shaft is provided and bearing is provided on that axles casing that means the weight does not total weights all the four weights uh, four loads we discussed in the previous video that not comes on that axle shaft directly so that in this axle shaft due to this two uh, tapered bearing is provided that means only driving torque is uh, bared by that axle shaft only driving torque and other uh, loads which are we can say torque reactions and other loads which is bared by that uh, axle casing so that, uh, by using of this type of uh, construction that means the weight of the uh, weight of the vehicles and other loads which directly comes on that axles and to the wheel because uh, the axles and uh, the wheel uh, hub are connected in a parallel way that's why the load of the load of the uh, vehicles and other loads okay which comes on that uh, wheel okay or we can say wheel through the rear axle casing okay rear axles casing not rear axles okay these are the uh, axle shaft or uh, this rear axle shaft only taken a uh, one type of load that is a driving torque because of we use the here two tapered bearing between the uh, flange sleeve and axles okay not between the shaft and axle shaft and the axles casing that's why it is a different from the uh, full flo uh, semi floating axles these are the different from that things okay so keep in mind and uh, in the exams you can draw these diagrams okay smoothly in that axles only uh, driving torque or driving torque is bear by that axles up that's why other loads comes in, uh, don't, does not comes on that axles up that means if uh, axles is failure or break, bro broken out during the running condition or whatever condition is there if axle is uh, or damaged or broken out that not impact on that vehicle that means you can easily tow that vehicles okay not break down or uh, vehicle in it comes in a uh, steady condition you can move easily and you can go to a uh, service or repair uh, repair centers by tow your vehicles but it is not in the semi floating axles because it that in semi floating all the loads carried by that rear axles it is only uh, this this axles only driving torque can be uh, bear okay these are the full floating axles so next is the three quarter floating axles in that three quarter floating axle is nothing but it is in between uh, robust full floating axles and uh, simplest semi floating axles okay that means it is in between of this two kind of which we already uh, discussed in the previous slides okay these are the three quarter floating axles okay in that case we uh, bearing is in between the bearing is provided uh, in between of the our axles okay axles casing these are the axles casing it is nothing but uh, axles casing which are hollow in that our axle shaft is provided okay axle shaft is provided and these are the axle shaft so bearing is provided over the axle shaft and uh, wheel hub these are the wheel hub okay this is nothing but the wheel hub these are the different from the uh, semi floating axles in semi floating axles that this type of bearing is in between axle casing and axle shaft okay this is the different from them okay bearing is provided uh, between axle casing this is axle casing and this is a wheel hub okay so what is the different from uh, this two okay in that type of three quarter floating the bending load and shearing load 
do not take up or be sustained by the axle shaft that means the whatever loads bending load or shear loads or due to uh, vehicle weight which comes on that axle shaft it is not taken by the this axle shaft so directly the vehicle weight or due to vehicle weight bending force and shearing load or bending load or shearing load which directly comes on that uh, axle casing which are taken by the axle casing and it is transferred to the wheel or wheel load or we can say wheel or tire these are the different from them okay but in that uh, semi floating uh, what happens that total loads or different types of load which comes on that axle casing through the uh, which comes on the axle shaft okay through the axle casing okay but in that case only uh, one type of load that is the drive torque which is taken by that axle casing this is the different from them uh, semi floating in uh, at, a, at a time at a sometimes or before uh, uh, before 90s that mean before 90s uh, this type of three quarter floating axles are used at one time this type of uh, three quarter floatings are popular and uh, this was used in earlier okay three quarter floating axles but uh, uh, some changes in the design and uh, materials and uh, and we can say our uh, size shape so this type of uh, uh, three quarter floating axles changed again in the semi floating axle and nowadays three quarter floating axles are not used so nowadays in full uh, light vehicles or we can say a uh, commercial vehicle or or for cars the semi floating axles are used okay so these this three quarter floating axles nowadays not are used in any vehicles so thank you so much so our uh, fourth chapter totally completed in that chapters we covered the differential mechanism limited sleeves and rear axles different types of rear axles